Hello people of Denmark. My name is Eric Latender and I'm author of the book The Amazing Dog Training Man. And recently I received an email from one of your citizens asking me about pit bulls. So what I want to do in this video is I want to talk a little bit about pit bulls. I want to dispel some of the myths around pit bulls. They're not these crazy killing machines that everybody thinks. And also, I want to educate you a little bit about how great the pit bull breed is. So, as you said, my name is Eric Tender. I'm the amazing dog training man. And I've been training dogs for 20 years. And I've helped thousands of people. I've helped them in the United States and all over the world. And I'm also a pit bull owner. I had a pit bull for a long time. And she was a fantastic dog. She got along great with all my other dogs, including my little Maltese. <laughs> this is Martini, and this was her best friend. My pit bull passed away about uh, two months ago, and um, she got along great with this little dog. So the thing you have to understand is that pit bulls are not killing machines like a lot of us think they are. Pit bulls can be very friendly, gentle dogs. They can be great with kids. They can be great with small dogs, they can be great with cats, they can be great with just about li anything, including livestock. The thing you have to understand is that all dogs have what's called prey drive in them. In some dogs, that prey drive is extremely um, intensified, and other dogs, it's much, much less. So if you have a pit bull with a very strong prey drive, of course that dog's going to have a desire to go after cats, livestock, things that run. But that's with any breed of dog, German Shepherds, Border Collies, any dog can have an intense prey drive. So that's important to understand. The thing about pit bulls is that they're not brought into this world as dangerous killing machines. The thing about pit bulls is that the people that tend to get pit bulls tend to be, how can I say, nefarious maybe. They tend to get into trouble. Tough guys, hey, I'm going to get a pit bull. This way I can, you know, look like a tough guy and they tend to get very macho with the dog and the way they treat the dog and the way they train the dog definitely has an effect on the dog's behavior that's extremely important to remember because if you bring up a pit bull and you socialize it around other dogs and you train it using positive reinforcement and you provide a good stable home environment and you provide leadership and a good diet you're gonna have a very nice friendly dog but if that same pit bull is not properly socialized as a puppy, you feed him a bad diet, you use harsh methods to train him, you're constantly yelling at him and smacking him and hitting him and using prong collars and shock collars, then of course the dog is going to get grouchy, just like you would if I treated you that way. And so it's just a matter of time before the dog is going to become aggressive, and a lot of times the aggression is encouraged in the dog. They actually want the dog to be aggressive. So that's important to understand. And the reason pit bulls have such a bad reputation is because they are extremely powerful dogs. When a pit bull decides to bite, he's gonna, he's gonna do damage. But the thing is, is a little dog like this can do damage also. Now obviously this Maltese isn't gonna do the same amount of damage as a pit bull, but Maltese, a Chihuahua, uh, a Pomeranian, all these dogs, they bite in a lot of situations. You'll see that the smaller breeds tend to bite more than the larger breeds because they tend to be babied and coddled and they're not brought up properly. So these are some things that you have to understand. One huge myth that makes me crazy is that a pit bull's jaw locks. It doesn't lock. It's just that they have incredibly strong, strong jaws and that when they decide to latch onto something, they put so much pressure into that bite that they can just, it seems like they're locked on. But the same thing is true with German Shepherds or a Rottweiler or even a little Maltese. If they decide they want to clamp down on something, it's very difficult to get them to release if they're committed to biting. So one of the things that I always do with pit bulls when I'm training them is I always teach them to release everything that they have in their mouth. From a very, very early age, I teach them to release. I get control over the teeth and jaws at a very, very early age, and I do this in a positive way so the dog doesn't have a desire to latch on to something. But it doesn't lock, they just have very strong teeth and jaws, and that's important to remember. Now, the other thing is when it comes to the dog's body language. Big myth that bully breeds don't give any warning, that they're just sitting there, and then bang, they bite somebody. That's completely false. 
A dog will give warning. Every dog will give warning unless, and this is the important point, unless it's been trained out of them. Okay. Now, as I said earlier, t people that get pit bulls tend to be macho. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna train this dog, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna kick butt and all this other stuff. And so they tend to use prong collars when they do training. I was, oh, I know. See. Um, now, if I put this around her neck or a dog's neck or my own neck, I want to be very pleasant, right? Now, here's what happens. A lot of times, trainers, when they're working with a dog, if the dog starts to growl or if he starts to show any signs of aggression, they give the dog a huge correction on the prong collar. Bang! They give the dog a correction. And the dog growls, correction. Growls, correction. Dog raises his lip, correction. So what this is doing is this is teaching the dog, if you get a warning, you're going to get a correction. So what's the dog do? He stops giving a warning. And that's why when it comes to training, we can't rely on harsh, forceful methods. We have to use positive reinforcement. We have to teach the dog that you know there's ways to uh, resolve conflicts around other dogs and people without becoming aggressive. Or if they do start to show signs of aggression, we can't just think that we're going to pound it out of them. So that's a huge myth. A pit bull will absolutely raise his teeth, his hackles, his ears. He'll stand up more erect, and he'll definitely give a warning before he bites, unless it's been trained out of him. So if there's a lot of people using prong collars and shock collars to train, that's why you're having problems, and that's why you're not getting any kind of warning before the dog bites. So a lot of times I get the question, well, what are pits good for? <laughs> and uh, that's, that's kind of silly because what's a Maltese good for? What's a German Shepherd good for? Dogs are our companions. We like to hang out with them. We bring them in the house and they become part of the family. Okay, But a pit is a very versatile dog. Pits are extremely, extremely intelligent. They learn very fast. They're great for doing agility. If you like doing agility, a pit bull is a great dog for that. They love pulling. Um, pit bulls don't make good watchdogs, believe it or not, because when pit bulls were bred to fight, they were bred to be very friendly to people, okay, and, and that's important to remember, so they don't make good watchdogs, but as I said, they make great companions because a lot of pit bulls don't have the energy levels, the sustained energy levels of like a border collie who just wants to work and work and work and work and work. Pit bulls like to go in short bursts. So a lot of times they make great family pets, they make great house pets, they make good apartment dogs. My pit bull was fantastic. She used to just love hanging out with us. And they make great therapy dogs, believe it or not. I know everybody thinks that they're killers, but they're not. Pit bulls can be great, friendly, very gentle dogs. So, what can we do about the pit bull problem? This is a question that I also get. What can we do? And the thing that we have to do is really we have to start educating people. And we have to pay attention to the people that are getting pit bulls, not the breed itself. Okay, and that's extremely important. We need to educate people on how to um, do proper breeding, how to train the dog, how to treat the dog, how to have it around the house. And as I said, we have to look at where is the dog coming from, the environment that the dog was brought up in, not the actual dog itself. So it's extremely important to remember because the dog is a product of its environment. Okay, I have a German Shepherd, I have a Maltese, I've had Pit Bulls, I've had Great Danes, I've had many different breeds of dogs, and they're a direct result of the environment that they're brought up in. It's as simple as that. It's not the breed, it's the environment. So, I hope this video has helped you out. If you have any questions, you can always email eric at amazingdogtrainingman.com. Thanks for watching.